This episode of the Productivity is Podcast is brought to you by Blinkist. Fit reading into your life with key takeaways from the world's best nonfiction books in text and audio. I'm a big fan of Blinkist, and I'm going to share more about this fantastic service with you during this episode, so stick around for that. This episode of the Productivity is Podcast is also brought to you by the University of California, Irvine's Division of Continuing Education. If you're trying to start a new career, build a company, or better develop an appreciation of the world around you, UCI Division of Continuing Education has the resources needed to support your undertaking. I'll have more to say about the UCI Division of Continuing Education during the podcast, so stick around. But for now, let's get on with the show. Welcome to the Productivity is Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Vardy, and this week on the show, I am joined by John Lamerton. Now, John is a self-described lazy entrepreneur. He balances running an ambitious lifestyle business with raising two young kids, kind of like me, and he's also a former hustler, so he lived that hustle lifestyle, and now he actually says he earns more money working 20 to 25 hours a week than he used to by pulling all-nighters and grinding for over 100 hours a week. He also mentors fellow ambitious lifestyle business owners, teaching them how to design their business around their lifestyle, and we're going to go over a lot of the stuff that he talks about in his book, Big Ideas for Small Businesses, Simple Practical Tools and Tactics to Help Your Small Business Grow. Uh, it's a really, uh, in, in, you know, kind of inviting and, and and warm conversation. It was I had a lot of fun. Unfortunately, uh, I did not have the right microphone on during this episode. So you're going to hear me, uh, uh, you know, in terms of hollowness compared to John. But, you know, I didn't want to let this interview slide. I didn't want to let this conversation slide because there's lots of stuff that we go into that is worth listening. So ignore me as you should and listen to the guest. So let's just get to it. Here's my conversation with John Lamerton here on the Productivity is Podcast. I'd like to welcome John Lamerton to the Productivity Podcast. John, thanks for joining me today. Ah, thank you for having me, Mike. Pleasure to be here. So I'm holding in my hands the book, Big Ideas for Small Businesses, Simple Practical Tools and Tactics to Help Your Small Business Grow. And my wife and I went through this book because we are still, you know, the, 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 what's the definition of a small business, John? Like to you, what is, I mean, there is this kind of idea of what it is, but to, in, your, in your mind, what is the definition of a small business? I think it's owner controlled and operated and I would say under under 10 employees. So turnover is not irrelevant not relevant, you know, I wouldn't worry too much about the the amount you earn, but for me it's small business is yeah, you control the business. How flexible are you? You know, can you can you turn that freighter around if you how how easy is it for you to pivot your business? That I think is the real crux of what makes a small business. Now you know, someone who I guess started with a small business but soon built an empire was Richard Branson, right? And mm. and, and you 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 have a do you have a bone to pick with him? Because because <laughs> one of the things you say is that like it's his fault that you had early failures. Okay, it first, was absolutely. So uh, dive into that a little bit because you know I'm sure he's listening. So I'm sure he is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Apologies now, Sir Richard. Um, but it's it's I, my bone isn't with him per se. It is the fact that Richard Branson is held up for us Brits as the poster child of British entrepreneurship. Um, if you are going to be an entrepreneur in this country, Sir Richard is the one you look up to. And he is the one that you are trying to emulate, trying to embody. And that's exactly what I did when I first started out. You know, when I first started my business 18 years ago now i remember sitting on a coach reading richard ranson's autobiography losing my virginity and thinking this is what i need to do i need to follow what this guy does he is a at the time multi-millionaire obviously now he's billionaire this is the guy i need to copy and that's great and it works up to a point at which point you realize that sir richard branson is not a human being he is a freak of nature <laughs> who is able to do things that mere mortals can't. So what people try and do, and what I certainly did, was they look at Richard Branson and they go, okay, so if I'm going to copy Richard Branson, what did Richard Branson do? Well, he started a, a student magazine. Okay. Then he said, I'm going to have a record label. 
And then at some point he said, do you know what? I'm also going to have an um, inter-Atlantic airline. Uh, and should we actually take people into space? Yeah, I think I'm going to own a radio station uh, and a bank um, and credit cards and a mobile phone company. Shall I do music festivals? And that is the way that this guy works. And he just goes, well, I've got a very, very strong brand in Virgin. What sectors can I take it into? What sectors can I disrupt? Which is great if you're Richard Branson and you're able to do that and actually go into these these businesses. Richard Branson is not running these businesses. He isn't sitting there at his desk doing the VAT return for one of his companies. He's not he's not sending out the press release for Virgin Galactic. He is the face of the company. He is the one that puts the team together. And he is the one that focuses on what he is good at. And unfortunately for us, as mere small business owners, we tend to copy him and think, you know, my, my first thing was, okay, I've got a website business. I've got an internet marketing business. Great. Let's de- delve into real estate and let's put up a website about uh, mobile phone insurance and private villa rentals and serviced office accommodation and a florist directory and a directory of sex shops. Completely random, completely scattergun. And eventually I found myself probably 12 years ago now, sat there with 30 different businesses in 30 different sectors and me mismanaging all of them, thinking that I'm Richard Branson. What have you done to kind of funnel that into like less stuff. Cause you're right. Nobody's like Richard Branson. I know with my own business that what I've tried to do in the past is have so many offerings within productivity as for example. Mm-hmm. And I realized that, you know, when you're, when you're operating with such small, um, small numbers, not just in terms of, of, of dollars, but also people and stuff. What, what are one of the, like, what, what have you done to kind of say, Hey, you know what? I want to, I want to have that, the, um, not the not the prestige, but the the ability uh, and, and the acumen that, that that Sir Richard Branson has. But I also recognize my own limitations because I'm not him. Exactly, it, it's it comes down to that focus. I think um, it happened for me probably about six years ago. Now we got uh, we got tied up with the panda and penguin updates from Google, um, and a lot of our businesses got decimated overnight, and. As a result of that, I took on a business mentor and I started working with this guy and he was very, very good, very, very blunt though at sort of saying, look, why are you wasting your time with this business? Why are you wasting your time with this? And one of the conversations we had was around my strengths and what I'm actually good at. And he said to me, right, what does this business, and we we're talking about one business in particular, he said, what does this business need to thrive and I said, it just needs more customers. That's that's the answer. All the systems are set up. Um, you know, all it needs is more people in the top of the funnel. And he said, brilliant. What have you done today to put more people in the top of that funnel? And I kind of ummed and ahed and went, well, I've been very busy today. I've had the occasion. <laughs> And I had to send a press release out. For, and do you know what? You, you'd be very proud because look at my inbox. I've got it down to like three unread emails. Yeah, but how many people have you actually put in the top of that funnel today? Well, um, well, I suppose if you if, well, if you round it up, it's zero. And he went, okay. So you've just told me that the most important thing in your business is to get more customers into one of these one of these companies. Yes. And you've not done anything to actually make that happen. No. Okay. I think I think we know where we need to go then, don't we? <laughs> and it just you know that for me it was. I mean, you, you know, from the front cover of that book, there's a massive light bulb there. But that was my light bulb moment. It was, oh my god, what have I been doing? And I remember just sitting down and saying to Jason, my business partner, right, as of I think two weeks' time. I am going full time on one business and I'm going to do one thing for that one business. And that one thing is getting and keeping new customers. It's putting people in the top of that funnel. That's all I'm going to do. In order to do that, I need you to do X, Y, and Z. And I need the team to do this and you know, make sure that everything around me didn't completely fall apart. And, you know, cause it would have just gone to chaos. So, Let's get two weeks. Let's put that in place. 
And then from then on, I'm going to focus entirely on marketing for this one business. And I saw the results instantly. And I think for me, it was that feedback loop of, okay, when I see the results of actual focused work rather than the me turning up for 100 hours a week with a scattergun approach, having seen the results of that, I was like, oh my God, what, you know, first of all, why didn't I do this five years earlier? Mm-hmm. But, you know, how, the, how do I let it get to this stage when actually it was using, you know, the, the old 80 20 principles about, well, actually, what's working here? What is that? What are the 20%? Away? For me, it was probably more like 95 5. You know, it was that I was spending 5% of my time doing stuff that brought in 95% of the money. And it was, it was then realizing, okay, if I just spent more of my time doing this type of thing and less of my time doing the other things, I'm going to have a very, very different business. And, you know, so it proved, I think we, we quadrupled the business within 18 months and then doubled it in the following 18 months. So like eight, eight X our business in three years, um, pretty much just by focusing on that one thing and not, you know, I, I, I you say it's to the detriment of everything else, but actually it was knowing what to let go of. And mm-hmm. that, that was probably the hardest thing, certainly in the early, in the first few weeks and months was letting go of everything that I'd been doing and not being as busy. Yeah, that, that was a real tough thing for me, not being busy. Um, yeah, I was busy, but I was busy on the right things. Meal planning is important because it prevents us from being a disappointed wreck when dinner time comes around and we have no clue what to make or even if we have the ingredients to make the meal. It's a time and a money saver, but most importantly, it frees up valuable brain space. Creating a meal plan prepares us for the week to come and gives us peace of mind that we're organized and can feed ourselves and our family. That's why I do it and that's why Plan to Eat helps me do it. Your subscription includes access to the Plan to Eat website and fully featured mobile apps on iOS and Android. And Plan to Eat gives you the tools to clip and organize recipes from any website, the ones your family loves and that fit your dietary preferences and needs. And you can create a meal plan around your schedule. Then what happens is the Plan to Eat software automatically creates an organized shopping list based on your plan. So sign up for your free trial at plantoeat.com slash timecrafting. That's plantoeat.com forward slash timecrafting. The coupon will be automatically applied to your account and can be used when you're ready to subscribe. It's valid for new customers only. Give Plan to Eat a try today. We're going to take a break from the proceedings to talk about one of our sponsors for this episode, and that sponsor is Blinkist. I love Blinkist. Blinkist is really the only app that takes the best key takeaways and the need-to-know information from thousands of nonfiction books and condenses them down into just 15 minutes so you can read or listen to them at any time. Audio written word, all that stuff happens within Blinkist. I actually have a recurring task in my task app to read a Blinkist blink every Friday, and I really should level that up. It really shouldn't be something that I do every Friday because I can pretty much use it either when I'm doing the dishes or or, or going for a walk. I can use it wherever. And I I think one of the things that I want to bring up right away is the fact I've been using Blinkist for years, and I found that my listening habits and my reading habits with Blinkist have changed over time. Uh, Initially, Blinkist was what I used for books that I might want to buy. So I want to kind of get the the key takeaways initially and then maybe go buy them so I can have a paper edition of the book. But a lot of cases, I've got a lot of books to read already. And frankly, I'm using it for research as well. So when I'm researching for different videos or blog posts or podcasts or anything that I'm doing, I will use Blinkist for that. In fact, you know, there are some people, Paul Jarvis would be a great example. His books are on Blinkist, right? David Allen, you know, they're, they're books that are on Blinkist that I can, I can look, you know, the idea of getting things done by, by David Allen. Now he's on there, you know, so, I mean, there are just so many great reasons to use Blinkist, especially if you find that you're pressed for time, you know, in less than 15 minutes, you can basically fast track your path to, you know, a more informed you. <laughs> you, know, you can feel like you can have those conversations at at your book club about uh, you know nonfiction books that you've read and things like that. Now, Eight million people are using Blinkist right now, so clearly something's working there, and it's got a massive and growing library from self help, business, health, history books, all that in between, and it's really Blinkist is made for for busy people like you, you know, the ones who want to get 
the main points of the books quickly without reading the entire book. So I fall into that category as well. And it's that audio feature. Uh, in fact, there was another audio uh, program that I was using to listen to books and Blinkist has now taken over for that. So that tells you uh, where, where that's coming from. But Blinkist has made it so easy for me to finish four books in a day when you're on the go. You could do that too. Um, Fridays is when I do that, but I could do that you know more often if I want. Blinkist is... It's it's just amazing, uh, and you know, in in today's age, it, it can be really hard to find the time to sit down and learn more. And Blinkist will help you with that. So I want to give you the opportunity to give Blinkist a try. So for a limited time right now, Blinkist has a special offer just for listeners of the Productivity Podcast. So if you go to Blinkist dot com slash timecrafting, you can start your free seven-day trial today. So that's Blinkist, spelled B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T dot com slash timecrafting, and that gets you started on that seven-day free trial. So don't forget, Blinkist dot com slash timecrafting. That's B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T dot com slash timecrafting, and start learning more about the books that you really want to read in in, in quicker doses today. I'd like to thank Blinkist for sponsoring this episode of the Productivity is Podcast. Now let's get back to the show. Now, one of the things I want to dive into is uh, you talk about in your book about five magic ingredients for success in almost any given field. I don't want you to give yeah. all five ingredients away because people need to buy the book. Like, I don't want you to like, eh, and there it is. The book is done. What, <laughs> what I would like you to maybe address is if you were going to pick one of those five magic ingredients to focus on, knowing what you like, based on what you just talked about, the 80-20 rule and, and doing mm -hmm. less better, which of those five magic ingredients, if any, like, I mean, you, they might all work for, for mm -hmm. with that principle. Which one would be the one that you would use to help you uh, get the most, you know, move the mo move further uh, along the path based on, on what you what you just illustrated with having too much going on? Ah, uh, that that is a tough one because I I see them working so often in tandem, mm -hmm. and I don't think any of them work on their own. Okay. So I mean the 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 final magic ingredient is action, and that is the key thing that I see most people are failing to do, and the answer for most people is you know I, I was chatting to a guy um, at the weekend who's been having an I year for a business for the last five years but he's not actually taken any time to take any action towards launching this business and for a lot of people they're not taking enough action but <laughs> on the flip side of that there are many many people and i'm including myself in this in my, in my previous life who take lots of action but it's the wrong action and they're going 100 miles an hour in the wrong direction so I think you need another one of the magic ingredients at least there to narrow down. What you're going to take action. Yeah, what you're going to exactly. take action. What action are you going to do? Because otherwise you'd just be a busy fool. Right, right. Yeah, well, and that's what was happening is you were busy taking action on things yeah. that re didn't require it. Um, one of the things that, that uh, I, you know, I was talking to uh, last year, I was, I was in the UK last year. Um, but you know, I had also been in the Philippines and, and with at Chris Ducker's conference there and Sean Stevenson was there and he's been on the show before. And, uh, he talked to me about like this idea of high intensity, inter high intensity interval training. Yeah. And you talk about this in the book as well, but you, you put a bit of a spin on it. Can you touch a little bit on where, where that fits into this, this idea of, you know, having these these big ideas for small business and how you can kind of integrate your version of, of HIIT into, into the mix. Absolutely. So I, I discovered HIIT training in the kind of health world probably about four years ago. And it was just instrumental to me in knowing that I could, you know, I didn't know, need to go to the gym for two hours every day, plod along on the treadmill. I could just do 10 minutes and it's absolutely working at 100%. But then having that rest to actually recover. And I realized not long after that, actually, I've done the same thing with the business. And actually, I tend to work in these high intensity bursts. So what I used to do was I would sit at my desk for say 12 to 14 hours every day. And if I was to put it on a percentage meter and say how hard 
you know, if a hundred percent is literally as hard as I can physically work, I cannot work any, you know, I can't do any, any faster or any harder. And 0% is you need to check me for a pulse. Hmm. Then I was probably working at about 65, 70% for most of the day for about 14 hours. And this happened. I, I had a change not long after my first son was born. And I, the number of hours that I was able to work was very, very greatly reduced down to like 20 to 25 hours a week. So I, I had to have these little bursts because I'd, I'd start work at say nine o'clock in the morning and I'd, I'd drop my son off at nursery, come back and I'd start work at nine knowing that I had to pick him up again at midday. So I had, in terms of you know, times I had to leave the leave the office, probably two and a half, two and two hours forty minutes, in which to do everything that I would normally have done in a ten hour day. So I've got this little fixed burst of of energy, and when you sit there and you know you've got stuff to do, but you have literally got an hour to do it in, all of a sudden your your output level does go up to a hundred percent. But you can't sustain that. You can't work at 100% for eight hours every day, five days a week. What I've discovered I can do is I can work at 100% for an hour a day, maybe an hour and a half, normally first thing. So energy levels need to be high. So you know, work out what your natural circadian rhythm is, work out you know, when your energy highs and lows are. Everyone's got a high at some point during the day. Work out when that is and then block in your hit working time then so that you're working at your peak. And you, you need to know, first of all, what is 100%. But then the key thing is once you're done with that, and you, you know, well, actually it's not done with it. Let's work on the right things as well. So let's clarify what we said about the action just now. You need to clarify what is actually going to move my business forward. What's the one thing that's going to give me the biggest bang for my buck? in this hour what what task do i need to absolutely nail in this hour and it isn't checking facebook it isn't clearing your inbox it isn't tidying your desk um for most people it's going to be writing a sales letter it's going to be sending out an email campaign it's going to be putting together an offer of some description it's going to be picking up the phone and following up with people that inquired about your product or service two weeks ago that you haven't got back to those are the things that you know actually if i do these things good things are going to happen in my business money's going to come flowing in customers are going to be raving about me and if you can do that in that one hour you can then pretty much coast at about 50 percent for the rest of the day and again i think if people walk past my office at two o'clock in the afternoon they will see me pretty chilled i'm sat there i'm maybe browsing facebook i may be even checking my email inbox i may be tidying my desk and they look at me and think how the hell does this guy make any money because all he's doing is sitting there messing around playing at business but I'm actually more effective working at 100% for, say, 90 minutes and then 50% for six and a half hours than I would be working at 70% for eight hours. We're going to take another break from the show to talk about another sponsor. And this sponsor is the University of California, Irvine Division of Continuing Education. Now, the UCI Division of Continuing Education has been around since 1962 and has been offering education for adult learners in Orange County for over half a century. But you do not have to live in Orange County to reap the benefits of what UCI Division of Continuing Education has to offer because there are 30,000 enrollments from students worldwide each year. And they offer hundreds of exciting courses and programs to local, regional, and global constituencies. Now, there are courses that are taught by expert instructors with industry experience, so you know you're getting the goods. And there's certificate programs and specialized studies programs available, which is great. And you can advance your career in as little as six months. So when time is of the essence and you want to make 
every moment matter, UCI Division of Continuing Education is going to let you do that. It's going to help you make that happen. Um, they offer over 60 convenient certificates and specialized studies programs on campus and also online that are designed for the working professional. So if you're seeking career advancement and personal enrichment, or you, you really just want to kind of better develop an appreciation of the world around you, the UCI Division of Continuing Education has the resources needed to support your undertakings. Now, spring quarter is coming up and registration's open. So if you want to take advantage of this special offer that they're giving Productivity as Podcast listeners, you need to visit ce.uci.edu slash podcast and then enter the promo code podcast. And what that'll give you is 15% off of one course. Now, this discount is for almost all of the certificate programs. The exceptions are test prep courses and some of the educational credentials programs. But if you go to ce.uci.edu slash podcast and enter that promo code podcast, you'll get 15% off one of the many courses that UCI Division of Continuing Education has to offer. Now, this offer is only valid for a limited time. In fact, as of March 31st at 11.59 p.m., this offer is gone. So take advantage of it while you can. I'd like to thank the UCI Division of Continuing Education for sponsoring this episode of the Productivity is Podcast. Now, let's get back to the show. You talk about boundaries. I mean, obviously, you know, building your business, doing less better. And one of the things that I found when we went through the book is that, you know, one of my favorite essays, and you mentioned it, is The Thousand True Fans by Kevin Kelly. Oh, and I as, love that. Yeah. yeah. And as we get closer to wrapping up here, um, it definitely, fl- it doesn't fly in the face, but definitely is is kind of a nice adjunct to what you talked about with Richard Branson running so many different things and having stark raving fans that are people like he's known around the world. But you don't need to be that if you, I think it's, it's again, it's quality over quantity, I think. And and can you touch on, on how that can apply to you know, how that essay has, has helped you and how others can apply it so they can help themselves as well. I th- yeah, I think it's, it's so easy as small business owners to just think the whole world is my target market. I want this massive, massive business. And you just go chasing these huge numbers. You know, you, you think, right, you know, if, uh, so let's, let's say someone's looking at starting a podcast and they're going to sit there and think, okay, I need 3 million downloads a month. I need this much ad revenue. I need to get these guests on. Actually, you don't need, you know, you don't need say a hundred thousand people to know who you are. You need a thousand people who absolutely love everything that you do. Um, We've got a Facebook support group and there's, there's less than a thousand people, just under a thousand people in that Facebook group. Um, We launched it about 14 months ago. And that's quite deliberate that there's about a thousand people in there because we are very picky, very selective over who we let in. We don't just let anybody and his dog in. We, I, I see it time and time again that there are Facebook group owners out there who just want to get to 10,000 as soon as possible. I need to get to that 10,000 number. And they get to the 10,000. And then three months later, you look at their group and there's no engagement. Nobody cares about them. So they've got 10,000 people who know who they are, but what they don't have is 10,000 people, uh, is 1,000 people rather, who absolutely love what it is they do. Um, it's, it's just one of those things. I think so often business owners try and complicate things. And I, I just love to take it back to the simplicity, simplicity of, you know, how many, pe- how many customers do you need? I mean, it's, it's, 1,000 isn't always the, the magic number. You know, if you're running a very high-end business, then your thousand true fans could actually be ten true fans, and it's just about that building loyalty, I think, because there's there's not too many companies out there that will actually focus on building loyal relationships with their customers. There's far too many companies that just they treat everything as a as a transaction. Mm-hmm. Just that you know, they're trying to win the next sale. And they're not thinking about winning a customer. And we now divert a lot of our marketing spend to retention. And it's just one of those things that most business owners don't focus on. They focus on getting new customers all the time. And we've all seen you know, reports and studies so many times about how much more effective and how much cheaper it is to keep a customer than it is to get a new one. And yet still, we spend all our marketing dollars on recruitment rather than retention now i think actually if you spend some money on on retention you create raving fans so let's see if we can get to those thousand true fans 
by actually diverting some of the budget to wowing those people. So if you've got 200 customers, let's spend some money on getting those 200 to bring in referrals to actually stay with us. So if we were to bring in another 50, we haven't, we're not replacing 50 that went out the back door. These people are still with us and they still absolutely love what we do. John, there's a lot more that we could cover, but we're, we're running short on time. So I want people to pick up this book, Big Ideas for Small Businesses, Simple Practical Tools and Tactics to Help Your Small Business Grow. There's over a thousand people that listen to this podcast, by the way. You've got at least 10 times that, actually probably closer to 20 times that. Um, so where can people pick up this book? At least a thousand. Let's go for a thousand and one. <laughs> where can they pick up this book and where can they learn more about you? Cool. So the book is on Amazon. Uh, it's become a bestseller on there. We are about f- just over a hundred five star reviews. Um, it's yeah. Um, best place to find me is actually on Facebook. So I'm on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn and just search for me. I'm on there. John Lamerton, L A M E R T O N. Uh, so we've got a Facebook support group on there, but if you connect with me on Facebook, we'll, we'll hook up, we'll link you in there. We'll get you all set up. Um, and yeah, hope, really hope you enjoy the book because it's it's I've designed it as a kind of a marketing book for people that don't read marketing books, mm. um, and a kind of a personal development book for people that don't read personal development books. Um, it's very very I like to think down to earth style, and yeah, it's it's strips things down to its most basic simple points that even a former civil servant like me with no formal training could actually pick up it's the book i needed to read basically 18 years ago when i started my business if i'd read that book oh my god the mistakes i would have avoided (laughs) yeah that's always the way and the great thing about books like this is that there's always i mean you're going to get something out of it yeah i mean there's i mean we know that there's a lot of books in the marketplace that that discuss things but every i mean it's all perspective based right like different voices talk about different things and 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 what i loved about the book is that yeah it is very down to earth and 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 we all need reminders too. So some of the stuff you might've read or heard before, but when it's a different voice telling you, actually, when I was talking to you earlier about speaking to Mike Williams, uh, who were getting things done for teens, um, I've talked to my daughter about like personal productivity and time management for eons. Me telling her doesn't do any good. But when she read that book, she's like, Oh, I get it now. I'm like, really, yeah. really? Yeah. Like, so, <laughs> so definitely hearing different voices, different perspectives is always important. And, and John, you put together something great here with this book. So check it out. Big ideas for small businesses. Uh, you can get it on Amazon and, and John, thanks for joining me today on the show. Oh, thank you very much for having me. Mike. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'd like to thank John for joining me on the podcast today. All of the show notes feature the highlights and takeaways and all that. You'll find that, of course, at the Transistor site, which is where we host our podcast. And if you go to uh, productivityist.transistor.fm slash 235, that's where you will find all of the show notes for this episode. And I encourage you to not only listen to the episode, uh, you know, for yourself, which you've just done. I want you to share it far and wide. So if if you can share it with uh, those who you think will benefit from what John had to share, I encourage you to do so. I also encourage you to leave a rating or review in Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening to the show. It really does help because what happens is it makes the show more discoverable. But also, uh, producer John Polster and I, we look at these uh, comments and feedback uh, whenever we have chances to sit down and meet, and we learn from that. So I, I wanted to draw that to your attention because the more ratings and reviews we get, the more people will listen to the show and the better we can make the show. So I'd love it if you were able to do that. That is it for this episode of the Productivity is Podcast. Again, I'd like to thank John Lamberton for joining me. I'd like to thank John Polster for producing the show. I'd like to thank Connie for doing all the show notes and that. I think it's, uh, it's, it's really great to have her on board. And I would like to thank our sponsors, Blinkist. Of course, if you go to Blinkist.com slash timecrafting, you can get your seven-day free trial. So be sure to check that out. And also, I'd like to thank the UCI Division of Continuing Education. Again, go to ce.uci.edu slash podcast and enter the promo code podcast for 15% off one course. But remember, that offer expires on March 31st at 11.59 p.m. So if you're listening after that, I'm sorry, but you still go check out UCI Division of Continuing Education. Nonetheless, uh, nonetheless, I'll be back next week. Regardless, irregardless, I don't know. I'll be back next week with another shiny new episode of the Productivityist Podcast. But for now, I'm going to leave you with this. I'm Mike Vardy, the host of the Productivityist Podcast, reminding you to stop guessing 
and start going. I'll see you later.